Uh, next up is uh, Ricardo Rios from Parity Substrate. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, we're going to talk about Substrate in general terms, and I'm going to show how it works, uh, like how easy it is to develop on Substrate and build your own blockchain. So cool. let's go for it. My name is Ricardo Rios. I'm a runtime engineer at Parity Technologies. And yeah, what we are going to be talking this time is Substrate, a little bit about Rust, Wasm, um, blockchain upgrades, and also about interchain communication. So what's the problem right now? Right now we have a big problem that one type of chain doesn't fit all. Like we really need to define specific use type of blockchains for different use cases. So we see that the future is going to be multi-chain. That's something that will really help escalate all the technology. We have seen also so far that many enterprises are starting to work in with blockchain, but they end up like building their own isolated private chains. And yeah, most of them doesn't even have like the permissioning and confidentiality requirements that they require. So again, we need to have some more specific technology for them. If you want to implement your own blockchain from, from zero, basically you need to take care of all of these kind of things. It's a really big list. You need to be able to create your own peer discovery. You need to have uh, some protection against DOS attacks or also how you're gonna synchronize the chain, fork rules, how um, databases, type of consensus. So the list is really, really big and it becomes super difficult for everyone that it's just exploring the technology to create your own blockchain without really being an expert on all of these topics. So what can we use to really create this? It's what's Substrate is here to help you on building that. It's, it's an open source, it's modular, it's extensible. Um, and it's yeah just a really good framework for building blockchains. Why it's modular? It's um, it's something very important, and I will explain a little bit later. And the main goal is how you can use different kind of Lego blocks in some way to build your own blockchain and without really needing to rewrite everything from zero. So some of the core components of a blockchain, it's as I was saying, like you need to have your network layer, databases, transaction queue, consensus. Um, and yeah, many of these are difficult to implement, but we can do it super easy with Substrate. And not just like taking the ones that we already have, you can write your own Palettes, which are these models that you are going to be using to plug into Substrate, and also you can extend the existing ones. So, getting a little bit more into what's uh, runtime, we have uh, the runtime here. It's part; it's just like written in Rust, and the other part it compiles to Wasm and to Native. This is kind of important because we will use this feature in the future for being able to do on-chain upgrades without really needing to stop our chain. And um, for example, in this case, we have the runtime, which has different palettes, different models, uh, like for staking, slashing, parachain, smart contracts, and all of these business logic, which defines your state, state transaction function, um, state transition function, sorry, it will be built to WebAssembly and you will be able to upgrade your chain by using this technology. So as I said, the runtime is the blockchain uh, logic. It's our business logic, state transaction function, and we can choose from frame, which is a kind of um, 
it, it's our framework for for where we have all the libraries that we use to build different palettes and different runtimes. And you can choose whatever palette, whatever model you want to implement in your in your own blockchain by just selecting the the ones that you are like, for example, in this case, we can add contract. It's something that we will show in the future, like right now in, in the demo. Uh, consensus, you can change the type of um, uh, like the type of uh, the type of uh, governance, like democracy, or you can use some more permission proof of authority uh, blockchain. So, what's the main reason why we need to upgrade the chain? So it it's something that for sure, like all the software, always needs to be upgraded. We need to fix important security vulnerabilities. We need to change sometimes some of the rules. It's also as easy as add new functionalities or probably we need to change or repair a little bit the, the state. So right now doing a, an upgrade, it really requires a lot of coordination between different nodes and between all the community just for everyone to have the latest version of the code in order to prevent hard forks. It also is kind of complex how the community decides what's the next upgrade that should be going to the blockchain. And many times it's like a few, a small group of people that they say, we need to put this on the chain and that's basically what it's done. So the community sometimes doesn't really has that many uh, power in that, that much power because there's no way to signal or to vote directly in a very truthful way that everything that you are asking for, it's gonna get into the blockchain. So the problem with, with the upgrade is that it's not, Probably it's not that we always want to create a fork or like it's an intentional fork. Forks happen all the time. And the main reason it's because, um, yeah, sometimes it depends on the on the consensus protocol, like proof of work, it basically lives with, with forks all the time. But in, in this case, like it depends when the, all the nodes are upgrading their own software. So, if you don't upgrade at the time that it's required, you will be in a fork, even if you didn't do it intentional. So that's one of the main reasons why on-chain upgrades are really important here, because then every, every person, even if you forget to upgrade one of your nodes, you will always have the latest version. And the, how this works, it's gonna be through WebAssembly and we will see this right now. So yeah, as I said, governing the runtime upgrades in, in this case, it's quite easy because we have on-chain governance with Substrate, you, you can implement voting uh, through democracy or like different kind of um, architectures that you can build in order to, to build your, your own governance. Also, you can have a proof of authority. In this case, it's with the pseudo module. It's, uh, it enables you to just like push, for example, in, in development mode, it's super easy just to have a pseudo module instead of having a whole democracy and asking someone to vote in order to put your new upgrade. You just push the new upgrade and that just makes you develop even, even faster. Also, I mean, this is not obligatory. These are optional, upgrades are optional, but yeah, of course it's super important to always be able to have your latest version of the, of the software. So when we build all of this runtime logic, we are building, as I said previously, we are building into WASM and into native. So building into WebAssembly allows us to put in the chain the latest version of the code. And everyone will basically need to, to follow a really simple rule. So your chain with Substrate will basically, first it will check if the native version is the latest version 
or it will just check if um, the WASM version is the latest one. So because running the, the code in native, it's always much faster than running the WASM blob because it's an interpreter. So we will always try to follow the native code. But then like if you receive an upgrade and you didn't upgrade your native um, code, your native binary, it will take from the blockchain, it will read your WASM blob and execute the logic from there instead of executing the native because the native has the old logic. So the way how you can put this WASM blob, it's how I explained with the governance, you can do some voting, democracy, and all the community will decide. Or this could be a proof of authority and probably a consortium chain and just a few nodes need to vote and decide or could even be just like a more permission uh, chain where you can specify your own rules, how these upgrades will follow. So I'm going to do a short demo here. And as I said, it's quite easy to use Substrate in order to add contracts, for example, in this case. I'm going to start with a really simple, uh, so we have a basic template in, in order to start building your own, your own chain. So this basic template, it's, uh, it has like just a template palette, which doesn't really integrate that much details, but what I'm gonna show you here, it's just super fast. I'm gonna start for example i compiled this before so we have the node template without any extra palette or module uh, yeah so i'm okay gonna so i'm gonna change here just go directly to okay polka gs apps it's a local ue user interface that we can use just to connect all to Kusama or any substrate based chain. In this case, I'm gonna show in the extrinsic tab, which is a way to send all the transactions. I'm gonna show that we have just a few palettes. We have balance, grandpa, pseudo, system, template, which is a one, uh, a one that you can personalize and timestamp. And in here, we will have a new one that will be called contracts. So in order to do that, I'm just going to show you that it's super fast to do that by adding. OK, so I need again to go to the. So in Substrate, we have Substrate dev, Substrate.dev. We have uh, a lot of tutorials. I'm going to just copy really easy, really fast. Uh, lines that I need here for adding the contract which is this contract and also I need to expose the standard part of the this contracts oh but I'm adding it in an incorrect part okay. in runtime I go runtime and let's do this again here. Yeah. And then we need to implement the contract straight. That's again, all of these details are on the web page just I don't want to enter really that much into many 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 details right now but I'm just gonna show that okay it's loading oh I didn't log in here huh. okay so 
I just implement the contract straight. I add the contracts contracts to my main cargo file, which is where we get the dependencies. But uh, in in other uh, in other languages, we also have these kind of files, like in JavaScript. And then I'm gonna just build this part of the code. Should take a few minutes because I basically have everything. Okay, but what was the issue here? Hmm, ah, okay, yeah, I forgot to add in the construct. We have a way to construct the runtime. And this is here. I need to add the contracts also here just to tell our macro, our runtime, that we are adding a new model here. Okay. So it's building will be taking like two minutes, something like that. Doesn't will be that long. Um, okay, now I can try to, oh, but I didn't log in, so I cannot answer here. Is going to help this build. So the smart contract that I'm gonna upload, it's also uh, it's built by a smart lang using a EDSL that we are developing in Parity that is called Ink, and it's super. It it follows all the Rust um, nomenclature. It just it's a subset of Rust. And we are quite easy to, to really develop with that language. So um, I'm not also going to get into that code. I'm just going to upload the, the final WASM uh, blob that we generate with that smart uh, contract and just show that our chain will now have the, the new palette, the contracts palette in there. So I'm just waiting a little bit there. So again, just as you saw, I really just had to do a few things, just implement in the construct runtime, which is this macro and the contracts. Then I implemented the contract straight, which this means that all of these are just some types that we use in the palette contract in order to specify um, like for example the deposits or like what's the price that you need to pay the rent payment or like every time you execute the smart contract and in the cargo tom file i added uh, just directly we are getting right now um, from crates.io, which is kind of similar to NPM for JavaScript. We are getting directly the code from there. We don't need any more to get it from GitHub. It will just load directly from the main dependencies from crates.io. So right now it's still building. Okay, so it's done, it compiled successfully. Let's run again the chain and let's just reload the web page. Okay, so we now have also the contracts public here. And we have a new tab here that it's contract that will allow us to basically work with the smart contracts. So in this case, I have a flipper smart contract, which is, it just loads a Boolean value. We will select what's gonna be the initial value of the Boolean, and then we can flip to the alternative value. So um, I'm gonna upload right now the code. And so in, in Substrate, we have two steps. 
for uploading a smart contract. So the first one is you upload the smart contract and then you deploy and create an instance of the smart contract. I'm not get, gonna get into a lot of details here, but this it's just to prevent having the same exact code several times on the chain. So this will make the size smaller. So I'm gonna start, for example, the chain with just a, the Boolean with a true. And then we can check the value of the smart contract, which will be, in this case, it's true, which and that's perfect. Then we can flip it. Okay, and then sure about this because there's a small box in there. And then we can read again the value. We started with true, should be false now. Perfect. That's working correctly. And so we just added the contracts palette to our chain. That was kind of fast and easy to do. So let's jump again to our presentation, but that's Okay, so now that's how we can really add palettes. It's a really fast way to do it. But then we also have something very interesting here in Substrate that are called of chain workers. So um, for example, this is how you can build uh, an example application, a DAP. So you have a lot of components to connect to external services or even databases. And we are also working a lot with Parity Secret Store. So it will allow you to encrypt transactions and create this privacy that enterprises need right now. So why? of chain workers are really useful because they work as a kind of oracle. In many cases, you can provide the price of Bitcoin, for example, or of Ethereum, whatever, of uh, a football match, anything that you want to, to add. Uh, it also helps you to provide some heavy computation. You can upload, offload many of the computation that happens instead of happening on the chain, it will happen on the node, and then you just need to uh, upload the, the result. And all of this goes directly to the runtime. You don't even need to use external or RPC services because this code connects directly to the main chain uh, node. So also you can use, as I said, external databases. For example, you could connect to cloud, you could connect to ERP systems, SQL, uh, even you can also use these trusted execution environments, which are very interesting because they allow you to encrypt data and to um, work with a specific data without really compromising keys or putting at risk some of the chain security. But okay, so just after talking a little bit about what we can build our own blockchain, we are still facing a fragmented landscape after being able to use this amazing technology. But the problem is like right now, blockchains cannot talk one with the other. They are isolated or they can do it, but through central services, not really in a decentralized way. So, here is where Polkadot gets uh, into the game. It's a network interface. It allows us to create this interoperability. And Substrate is the way to go to build for Polkadot. You can also do everything, like if you follow all the rules that the Polkadot network will uh, allow you to, to do, but it will be the way to go if you use Substrate. So just explain a little bit or where 
from where was Substrate. Substrate started from Polkadot. So Polkadot started like being developer, all the software. And then Substrate, like after uh, following that many, many, after seeing that many of the patterns were repeated every time, like of um, like databases, networking layers, uh, also transaction queues, all that kind of patterns are always consensus, are always quite similar in many base layers. We found that we can create these models in order to enable developers to build, really see um, their own blockchain. So really substrate, it's completely compatible with Polkadot because it was born from Polkadot source code. So just explain a little bit here. It's we are seeing a high vision of what Polkadot will be looking for. It's we will have some parachains with uh, that can communicate with other parachains. Also, there are some bridges that will be able to communicate a parachain with other blockchains like Bitcoin or Ethereum in a very trustful way. So instead of having to pass through a central server, we will be communicating through the relay chain, which is called Polkadot in this case. And this is how we envision that Polkadot will be looking for in, in, in the near future. And yeah, that's my talk for now. Thanks. So I don't know if someone has some questions right now. What is there an example of uh, blockchains that are actually using the substrate other than stuff that's being done by parity or uh, is it successfully being used by other organizations or is it more being utilized for experimentation within parity? No. Um, so yeah, of course we have, uh, so let me just open that. We have obviously that Polkadot is the main one, but we also have uh, other projects that are building, for example, substrate.dev. Yeah, here, which is our main learning repository. We can see that Chainlink, for example, is building on, on substrate. We have Edgeware. Uh, there are also some private companies that are building on on substrate and many others that are just starting to look into substrate. Uh, also, for example, uh, in the in the community, there's a really big project that we have seen, uh, like working with Ethereum. It started working with Ethereum. That was the World Food Program, but they also want to work with Substrate. So they are looking forward on how we can start improving all the technology, all the programs that they are using in to work with migrants, with refugees, uh, in order to really extend and to build something more interoperable with the technology. So yeah, we have big enterprises also getting into into here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.